Then you can put in your work and people can see the work. This video, no be Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl Mandis of MK and I'm back with another video. It's been a long time since I've done a story time. This is not your normal story time. Today, I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna be talking about my total hip replacement. But you lot already know, before I get into anything on my channel, it's show o'clock. Maybe I should do two, cause it's only 21% and it's half time. Alright, grab your popcorn and let's get into story time. In my last video, which was the life update, I let you lot know that I had arthritis and that was about nine months ago. So, this is the update. The update is your girl got her hip replaced. I was meant to do a vlog, I recorded all of it and everything, but I was looking buttered, like my skin was breaking out and I just looked ugly in the video. So I decided I'm gonna talk you lot through it and talk you lot through how the experience was. Cool. So let's get into it. So after numerous uh, like appointments, calling the hospital, asking for referrals, I finally got referred to King's College Hospital. So my hip issue was always bad, but I learned to live with it. But whenever it was time for appointments, I always did the most. Always. So if you know me, you know I don't walk on my crutches. But when it was time for an appointment, I'd go to work on my crutches and I'll go to the hospital limping, dragging my foot, drag to sit down, I'll be sitting down. Like, Ugh. <clears throat> Every time I saw the doctor and the doctor would be looking at me like brah and I'm like yeah sometimes I can't even walk I can't go to work because my leg is cramping and the leg my hip will lock that is true my hip doesn't lock but I just overdid it just so they could take me a bit more seriously than they were fast forward fast forward fast forward now I got a letter and the letter basically said no let me even before that so but there was one appointment where I went to go see the doctor and my mum my was at work, so I made my mum come to the appointment with me. And then the doctor was basically trying to talk me out of the surgery by telling me all the cons are, you can have a blood clot, you can lose your leg, you could get um, an infection, your body could reject the hip, all of these different things. And he was like, are you sure you still want it? I was like, yeah, I still want it. He was like, I'm gonna ask you one more time, are you sure? My mum was like, yes, you sure she wants the surgery. So basically trying to make me not get the surgery, but I was always getting it, unless they want me to limp around for the rest of my life, and I'm only 20, I was only 24 at the time. Then, they, the man basically said, all right, we're gonna put you on the waiting list. We don't know how long this waiting list is going to be, but we're just gonna let you know that you're gonna be put on it. I was like, all right, cool. That's a bit of progress, isn't it? It could be in a year, it could be in two years, but I'm on the list, so that means the surgery's gonna happen eventually. Living my life, living my life, and then um, June comes, and then I receive a letter on the post. So if you know King's College, all their letters, on the front it says delivery group. So I was thinking, oh, bro, what's King sending me letters for? I've opened the letter. Hi, Melissa. This is a letter for you to come in for your pre-assessment, for your surgery. I was like, what? Me? So I went into the hospital. This was like, yeah, June, July, something like that, between June and August. So when I went in for the pre-assessment, they did my blood and all these different things basically talking over what um, the surgery was, telling me I'm not allowed to have nails, I need to take out all my piercings, all these things. But I still didn't know when my surgery was. They were like, oh yeah, they're gonna call me and just let me know when my surgery is. This was during COVID time, so they were telling me, oh, when I, when I finally do get the call up for the surgery, I have to isolate for like four days or something like that. Can't go anywhere. So one day I'm at work, I think it was in September sometime, and I get a call from like 018 Sutton, 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 and then the thing said Orpington. Before this, the, the hospital told me that my surgery was going to be in Orpington and not Canberra. I live in Peckham. Canberra was there. Orpington is there. So when I've seen the number, you know when a number calls you and you can see where the number's calling you from? So it said Orpington. I was like, right, answer the phone fast. They were like, hi, is, um, maybe speak to Millicent Barnes, please. Um, yeah, can you confirm your date of birth and your postcodes and the, 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 all that and they're like oh hi yeah so you are on the waiting list for a total hit replacement blah de, blah de, blah i'm like yeah, yeah 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 they're like okay um so the next available date that we have is on the 4th of november and this was in two weeks time 
So I was like, yep, okay, sign you right up. He's like, are you sure? Da, 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 da. I was like, yep, 4th of November, I'm available. They were like, okay, so remember, you have to isolate four days before you don't have to go anywhere. Da, 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 da. I was like, okay, cool. So I finally got a date, guys. I got a date to get my hip replaced. So the 1st of November was the day that I had to start my isolation. Gone home at 8 o'clock in the morning, I've called open to hospital and I've told them my situation. They're like, okay, that's fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna call you a cab to take you to Orpington <laughs> and then take you back home just to do your COVID test. I was like, okay, that's fine. They were, they, they were paying for it. I was like, yep, that's fine. That's not an issue. So this was the worst conduct, guys. I felt like I was in the Civil War, or World War Two, but I didn't feel like I was living. Is this is a first world country, isn't it, guys? It's a first world country, right? Okay, I didn't feel like I was in a first world country. Let me tell you what they oh, I went through. So I've taken the cab to Orpington. The cab drivers had the window down the whole journey. Peckham to Orpington is not quick. The journey was an hour. The window was down. I had a mask on. Why is the window down? Cool. Got to Orpington now. It is freezing. This is November. It's freezing. I'm looking around. I've gone inside the hospital. I'm like, okay, what do I do? Where do I go? They're like, oh yeah, come out the hospital. Turn right, turn right again. You're going to see a tent in the car park. Guys. I did my, my COVID test in a tent in a car park. They took my blood in a tent in a car park. There was no like closing bit, it was wide open. Guys, the breeze, and they finally managed to get the blood out of me. Cool. So then I've gone back, I've jumped back in the same cab to go back to my house and pick them. Cool. Fast forward two days, yesterday for the surgery, and they've, they've sent transport to come and pick me up. Why was the transport coming at 5 a.m.? My surgery, my surgery was <laughs> my surgery was scheduled for nine. <laughs> Got to the hospital at six. They don't start letting people upstairs until seven. So we had to sit in the waiting room from six to seven, just waiting. There was no the vending machine had butters, Chris and Drake. I was you like, I don't know, man. I felt like I was being punished. So yeah. Remember I told you that they said I had to take out all my piercings and all of these different things. So I'm at home trying to fiddle and trying to put in all these tongue piercings and ear piercings and all of these different things. Ch change them over to plastic ones. Guys, when I was at the um, hospital, the woman was telling me I had to take it out anyway. Do you know how long I was fiddling for? I have 13 piercings. I was fiddling for time. I had to tell me I had to take them out anyway. I had to sellotape my entire ears. Only God that made me be able to hear people. Because there was literally sellotape on every crevice on my ear. Oh my days. Ah, oh, I don't think I told anyone this. So they gave me epidural. You mothers who take epidural before you give birth, yeah, I, I don't know, I commend you. Firstly, the needle wasn't going into my back. That's the very first thing. I was crying. You know when you cry solid tears, like the tears were, if I gathered it like this, I couldn't wash my face. That's how much I was crying, I was crying so much. Because I had to sit like this, my back over like this. Bearing in mind my hip is hurting as it is, I have to sit like this. And they're trying to put the epidural in my back over here and it's not going in. It's not going in. Why did you make the nurse, the practice nurse do it? Give it to a nurse that knows what they're doing. Oh my days, guys, when I talk about pain. Epidural, I, if I could, if I get, if God blesses me to have a child, then it's time to give up. I'm not taking epidural. You people who do it are very firm and you have the, the Lord with you, boy, because that is it's not worth it. So, when they've done the epidural now, I've lost the sensation in my legs and then they've given me the anesthetic. Yeah, I had the surgery. I think the surgery was three hours. I thought the surgery was going to be like two days. Or 12 hours. Like, I think I watched too much Grey's Anatomy. When I watched Grey's Anatomy, they would do the surgeries for 20 hours. This is real life, so they put me in the recovery room. As soon as I woke up, guys, I started crying. I started, the room was so cold. I don't know if it was because the um, anesthesia was wearing off, but the room was freezing to the point where they had to give me like a plastic duvet as well on top of the three, four blank, uh, blankets that I had. I cried from the recovery room back to the ward. I cried, cried, cried. Even the porter was asking me like, are you sure this girl's okay? I was bawling, crying, 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 crying. I was crying because I was cold. Then the pain came in. Wow. 
I've been in pain, but never like this. The pain was so bad that um, after I'd gone back to sleep and woken back up, when my doctor had come to come and check on me, I even told him to take back the hip. That's how much pain I was it got, guys. <laughs> Since I'm not joking, the pain. I said, doctor, I'll just take it back. He said, I can't take it back. I'm giving it to you. I said, no, I don't want it. I was taking at least four morphines a day, four oxycodones a day. It was just mental. I couldn't sleep in the mid. And you know how, like, when you take painkillers, you have to take them in um, time intervals. It has to be, I think, was it four to six hours between each dose? Oh, those four to six hours, just take the leg. Not only take the hip, take the leg too, because I don't need it. Oh, my days, pain. Guys, I got so much medicine that they gave me. I didn't even finish it. There's so much that they gave me. It was so peak. A lot of the medicine that I had to take came via, came in via my IV. Oh my days! Sorry. Hey. Yeah. Oh wow! Sorry. Ah. Oh. My manager finds this clip very funny, but I don't because the pain was surreal. So with the IV, they have to flush it with sal sal saline water, is that what it's called? Flush it out with water before they put any medicine in it because dry blood gets caught in it. It wasn't nice, like the thing, oh, the whole, guys. I'm so grateful for my new hip, but when I think back to the pain that I was in, so because I had a hip replacement, I sort of had to learn how to walk again, had to learn how to use crutches. Guys, it was a lot. Man. Mentally as well, because it's not even like I can have visitors or nothing. I don't have visitors. I have to rely on FaceTime, and people work. Do you get? It? I can't be cool FaceTiming people every day, every minute of that, every every hour. More time I'm sleeping throughout the day, and then I'm awake at 3 a.m. because of pain. Do you get? It? So it was it was different. I had to learn. I had to do physiotherapy. I had to practice climbing up and down stairs. I had to learn how to go to the toilet using crutches and just manoeuvring. I had to learn how to sit down using crutches. Oh, it was peak. But yeah, um, so I got discharged four days, three days after my surgery. I kind of forced them to discharge me. I was tired of being in that hospital. I won't lie to you. I wanted to be home in the comfort of my own house and not in Orpington in Peckham where things make sense. So, so the hospital gave me very different tools to learn that adapt to a different that, that just being back to normal, isn't it? So basically this was for me if I wanted to put on my socks. Essentially I'd put my sock on through here and then I'll hold up by both the handles like so and then I'll put my foot in and then the sock will go on. This is my favourite tool that they gave me, I went like to you. Just to grab things that are far like I could have been allowed to pick it up but I don't want to because I've got a clip. <laughs> and then they gave me this. Oh, I never used it to scrub in between my toes so yeah so I got home on the 7th or 8th of November and I was practically bed bound for two weeks but I said practically heavy on the practically because supposed to be bed bound for six weeks by the third week I was up and out I went down to I was using both crutches or one crutch I started off using both crutches and then I was using one crutch and so on and so forth but it's just because that like, someone like me if i'm at home for too long i get depressed my mom goes to work my sister goes to work my dad goes to work everyone goes to work and i'm at home having to take three minutes you lot it used to take me three minutes to climb up my stairs i don't have that many stairs it's 14. why is it taking me three minutes to walk up those stairs and then on top of that six weeks after my surgery i was flying out literally six weeks to do the i had my surgery on a thursday i was flying out on a thursday six weeks i was going to sarah Lane for a month so i had to start walking i had to learn how to be mobile and all of these different things by by the time i was going to sarah Lane, i was still limping but it wasn't as bad i was meant to have a, an appointment before i went to sarah Lane. the physiotherapist called me she's like yeah 100 percent. before you go we're gonna see you we're gonna call you that week you're gonna come in and we're gonna assess you give you some more exercise have they called me since have I heard from them? The last time I heard from my physiotherapist was on the 10th of December. It's practically August. But yeah, all in all, 
and I'm very glad, I'm very happy with my new hair. As you can see, I'm sitting down how I want to, and I can balance and all of these things, and I can, why not my body like <laughs> I'm really happy with my surgery, like I'm so happy to things that I haven't been able to do since I was in year 11. Seriously, like, do you remember when I used to do splits in year 7? <laughs> in the classroom? <laughs> been splits. Yeah. Don't let me get back to that person because everyone, even Dominique should be scared. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that is just basically a talk through of my total hip replacement. I'm very young, very, very, very young to have had a total hip replacement. I'm very young to have had arthritis, so when I tell people I've had both of the, those things, it's just like, are she lying? <laughs> but I'm a creep, I would have lied, but I haven't. Who wants arthritis? So I know some, of, some people have been messaging me and asking me about my arthritis and such like that. But listen, if you want surgery, all you have to do is milk it. Milk it! But if you don't have any more questions, comment in the comment section below. And I'll try to answer it as much as I can. But yeah, so... This is the end of this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'm trying to hit 3K. I think I'm like 500 away from 3K. It's been your girl, Madness with MK, and I am signing out. Peace.